Uh, so I'm Will Bucock, so I work at Starling. Um, so I'm currently in the, in the banking team uh, with, with a lot of experience in the bank as a service area. And so f for Starling and for me personally, I think with open banking, it's, it's an extension of what Starling believes in, in people should own their own data and uh, be able to use it in, in the way they want. Wonderful, thank you very much. Well, talking about bank banking as a platform, banking as a service tonight, so what is it and what's Open Banking got to do with it? Sure, so from Starling's perspective really, um, what we offer for, for bank as a service and as a platform is we let people use our infrastructure and our connections into um, various payment schemes to be able to basically fulfil the needs of their business um, in a kind of quick, e easy, efficient way uh, via an API. So open banking is also a massive part of what we're doing at Starling, um, kind of sits alongside the bank as a service uh, opportunity. So, so we find a lot of our customers that use our infrastructure to process payments also have an element of open banking um, on board with that as well. Um, just um, very often we'd hear, you know, when we talk about banking as a platform, um, there are usually two models that compare to each other, collaborate versus compete. So which model, model do you think or would you say Starling actually is using? So I think we um, take elements from both of them really. So we, we have a very strong vision that we want to be offering the best bank accounts in the world really across retail, SME as well. And with open banking and our marketplace being a massive part of that. On our banking services side, we also service uh, some of our competitors and some people that will be in a similar space to us. But for us, I think um, it's kind of testament to our platform and kind of the, the offering we have that people want to use us and even competitors are, are happy to use our services. So I think we take elements from both really. What is the advantage of being um, banking as a service, banking as a platform uh, with a banking license? Because we, tonight we're going to have both examples with license and without. So can you share it? Sure. Um, so I think having a banking license for us, it's um, we're very used to kind of the... the uh, the actions and requirements you have as a regulated entity to be able to offer services to um, other customers and, and individuals as well. So I think we're very, very comfortable um, fulfilling those requirements. Um, it also allows us to do some, some things that if you're unregulated you can't, for example, uh, using our deposit book to be able to offer additional functionality uh, to our customers. Um, but I, I think there's definitely drawbacks, but I think on balance I think it's really, really useful for us having that experience as a bank internally um, as well as our kind of integrations with the schemes and various aspects that we've gone through to fulfill our banking obligations, we can then, then offer to some of our open banking and banking services partners. Wonderful. It sounds amazing. So um, how do you see open banking evolving and how would that affect banking as a platform, as a concept? Sure. Um, so I think for, from the feedback we've got and, and what we see with some of our customers, I think it's only going to be good news for bank as a platform. Um, with some of our customers they're kind of in, in the infancy or they, they're just starting out with with a new venture that ties heavily into open banking and i think as open banking grows that's obviously going to um, increase the potential of, of their use of our platform how they can grow and onboard customers and I, th I think the big thing with open banking and i think that is important for any line of business but specifically the one we're in is gaining that trust with customers um, once you build that i think that's really going to expand the opportunities that we see and um, and i hope that happens soon really watch this space yeah, um, well, once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we've got a very special community here tonight, quite a lot of people joining. Um, so where do you see the value of um, the community, like Open Banking Excellence community? And where, how can we support as a community? How can we support Open Banking? How, how can we support its adoption and potentially its development into something that a lot of people are referring to as open finance today? Sure, and so, so I think what you, you te your team is doing is um, really, really important. So I, I think a big part of it is awareness, getting people aware of what the opportunities are with open banking, um, what the kind of possibilities are and, and how to approach that in, in the kind of the best way. I think for some people it's quite technical um, and I think that kind of puts some people off really or is, is a bit of a... Um, uh, kind of worries people but I think there's, there's really nothing to be worried about when there's kind of such a supportive environment. I think most of the participants really that, that I've ever come across are enormously helpful and it, it, people, people want uh, to be using each other's platforms, they want to be providing the best service they can to individuals and to customers um, and to really kind of make an impact on how open banking can change not only people's kind of personal financial lives but also the products and services that, that they use and consume. So in your opinion what's the future looking like? So I think the future is that I think 
um, a, a big increase on uptake in terms of people using it. I think awareness of it um, and actual use of open banking is going to be a massive step up. I think quite a, right now, I think there's lots of talk about it and lots of people are keen on doing it, but I think we, we have a little way to go before it's uh, kind of standard for everyone to be using some sort of open banking implementation. Um, but I, I think this year is going to be a huge year for it. I think um, the kind of uh, groundwork's been been done, um, and so this year is going to be, I think, the year that, that something really special could happen. Well, that's really interesting. You're not the first person who's saying that, that 2020 is the year for more use cases, more innovative products. What do you think is going to be the most exciting project? So I think um, in the kind of previous years, we, we've seen a lot of personal finance apps, um, more account information, I think, has, has been kind of previously. I think next step we'll be looking at payments, really, how people are going to be using payments in different ways, whether that's from acquiring uh, card use um, or a kind of more complex uh, payment flows that maybe people weren't too keen on before with, with, with a little um, more understanding. I think they're really going to be on board with that. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, William. Thank you. Thank you.